I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 19th of February, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua, and today is Sunday, and I don't have a topic for today, so don't get too excited. This is going to be just a vlog update. Sundays tend to be a pretty slow day here on the show, and it's been a very busy week with a lot of stuff for you guys, uh, and today I kind of need to do catch up on life and the show and just everything. So I'm gonna have, we have a really interesting day, I think, a little bit of an interesting day. Uh, so I'm gonna tell about that a little bit and some things coming up and we're gonna do some random footage catch up uh, after that. So that's kind of our thing of the day. I have a little bit of uh, random footage uh, and the big thing that I have, one, I'm just gonna show some of the stuff of the dogs, but I've got the footage of, um, I did manage, I promised in a, in a previous episode that I would get some uh, footage of the buses here in Leon, we have these new buses that came in. I was out on a walk and talked about it. I have managed to get uh, some footage of that, but it's not connected with anything else. So we're gonna show that after talking about the day, but we're gonna start with the day. Uh, but first, we're gonna go to the bump because I like it. When I wrapped up the walk yesterday, I said that we were going out to a birthday party that evening. So I actually want to talk about that because that was really fun. This is really cool for us that uh, it was an opportunity um, to be invited to something that is incredibly um, a part of Nicaraguan society. So as expats, and I've talked about this a bit on the show, there's, um, there's this uh, really high chance that you're going to end up um, in an isolated community. You're going to talk to other expats a lot. You're going to spend a lot of time doing things with English speakers, going to English speaking places. And if you're not careful, uh, you, you can end up being quite isolated away from uh, Nicaragua as, as its own place. And of course, for a lot of people, that's what they want. So the fact that you can do it can be a big positive. Oh, that's what you're looking for. Great. You can pull it off. But if you're not looking to pull that off, if you're uh, an expat, but you're hoping to be a part of the place that you're moving to and a lot of this will come down to and certainly not a hard line but many like retirees who are coming down and looking to stretch their dollar are probably looking more well it's not that they don't want to be a part of Nicaragua society they're not avoiding it they're not trying to keep themselves separate but they're not very likely making a big effort to integrate. They probably appreciate having more English speakers around. They would probably appreciate having an opportunity to hang out with other people who are more like them um, culturally or uh, uh, traditionally, whatever. Um, and so those people are gonna gravitate, maybe not so far as to go to like San Juan del Sur where you're really in an enclave, but Ometepe, Granada, other places where it's really easy to hang out with lots of expats all the time. Um, and they're not, they're not going to avoid doing things with the Nicaraguans, but they're not going to work really hard to be a normal everyday functioning member of society uh, in that way. I think you know what I mean. I'm not trying to say anything particular. Um, but for those of us who are younger, not retiring and um, here to work and raise children and, and that sort of thing. Of course, there's some of us who are like, no, no, I just want to save money and live in a safer place. And, and I, but I'm not like really necessarily interested in Nicaragua as a culture and a society. Um, but for a lot of us and us especially, this is our home. This is where we plan to live. This is where we think our children are going to live. This is where we are. And so being um, integrated into real Nicaraguan society, not the, and, and part of that, not that expats aren't a part, a real part of society, um, but expats have a tendency to be, uh, uh, I don't know how to put this well, but um, only there for their lifespan right? <laughs> Meaning they're not here to raise families. Their families don't move. Their, their culture doesn't move with them. They come from another place. They have a set amount of time that they're here. And then either they, they go somewhere else or they you become old and pass on. And, and that is the end of their Nicaraguan experience. Whereas like for us, we anticipate that our children are very likely going to also be members of Nicaraguan society. And there will be a very good chance that there are grandchildren, our great grandchildren, and so forth, uh, are going to. And we're making a very large investment in time um, as employers here, as investors here, as people who are interested in the country, um, and as as parents here, right? So um, our our way of of viewing Nicaragua, I think, is very different 
than um, the average person that you're going to talk to. Um, and that's not good or bad, of course. This is simply, these are things that are very important to us and things that you may not be interested in uh, yourself if you're coming to Nicaragua, especially not as a tourist, but maybe not even if you're coming to live, and that's fine. Um, and things you may not really think about uh, too much because um, in a lot of cases when you're moving to another country, uh, it's so easy not to integrate uh, too heavily at least that you never really think about it. But for us, it's really, really important. And, and today is one of those days where uh, we were in a situation where we were invited to, and it's, it's a birthday party, right? So it's not a big formal thing. It's not a, uh, but it was, a, it was very much, um, as I'm thinking about it, I think we were the only uh, extra and Harrow's who were invited, which, is, or, or were there at least, who knows who was invited. Um, and it was, it was a big family event. Um, and there were a lot of, uh, people from around Leon, uh, that are part of the, uh, music and art scene and, and quite a few people we knew. So it was, it was very comfortable and very nice. And, and all, and all the people like the family was great. Like, um, and, but we got to go to a very traditional, uh, Nicaraguan, uh, beach house, uh, one that I've shown on the, on the show before. I had, this is one I'm always like, I wonder who owns this house. I always wanted to show this house. And, and it turns out to be a friend of ours. I just had no idea that he owned this house. Um, so that's perfect. I'm, I'm really hoping we're going to be able to get, uh, tours of it for you guys. It's not a, it's not a really big house, but it's a really neat property in Ponaloya on the beach. And, um, and one of the things they were showing off at the birthday party is all this new artwork by a friend of ours that we were also at the party hanging out with. The artist was there, and he is the same muralist who is doing um, not the stuff you've seen so far on uh, at the at the at our hotel, um, but he's doing new stuff that you haven't seen yet. It's underway, but we haven't shown it yet uh, at the hotel. We have one muralist who's doing the stuff in the restaurant that you have seen uh, the the new pirate stuff, uh, but the uh, mermaid's rest, the uh, Serena Verata, uh, that's being done by Samuel uh, that we've known for a long time. And uh, that's that's going up there. We're also anticipating very likely he's going to do some artwork, not murals, but just regular artwork paintings here uh, at the at the house uh, as well. So uh, so this was really, really cool. This was like a, a major kind of social event in Leon society. And we got an invite to it and where it went and had a really nice evening. Everyone was so friendly and fun, and it was just neat being out in a thing that had no pretense of, of uh, being for foreigners and no pretense of uh, expat life or um, uh, commercialism, just a, a family house party uh, with a lot of really cool people. And it, it was a really special night. Um, for us, and uh, and we had a lot of fun. And originally, we had thought we were going to go out from about seven to nine. But the the reality of Nicaragua house parties is that they don't start when you think they're going to start, right? So if they say seven, you really want to get there more like seven thirty. We were actually running late; it was a little bit more like seven forty-five. That was too late. Seven thirty would have been better. Um, and uh, and they had our friend uh, Roberto Reyes uh, was playing music, so it, live music. Like, it was great, like paintings and murals and live music. Um, it was a it was a very uh, very cool party. And uh, on the like right by the water in this beautiful house that was all opened up, so the house itself was a cool showcase. And uh, we sat down, sat outside. It's pretty warm this week, so we sat out on the street, kind of. They put tables and chairs right up against the street, and they they catered. Um, and uh, I I've never had this enchiladitas with uh, with refried beans. That was fantastic. Paul and I are both like, this is amazing. This is so good. I I don't know why I've never had that because those are things that you eat independently here. But that was that was really exceptionally good. Uh, and uh, we just had a really nice time. And we went till more like 10, 1030. Like we didn't leave anywhere near as early as we thought we did. But towards the end of the party, uh, Dominica and Marcella and I are like, you know what? Cause I had said this earlier. I'm like, are we going out dancing afterwards? Cause we're going to be on the beach and it's Saturday night. That's the, that's where you want to go. And, uh, they're like, no, 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 we've been, we've been out so much and so busy. We're not doing that. Um, and I'm like, oh, I really, I really thought we would have, that would have been my plan. Um, and then once like 930 rolled around, they're like, let's send Paul home because he needs to go to bed. Let's go out dancing at Pelican. I'm like, that was my plan all along. Um, so, so we ended up about 1030. Um, the owner of the house drove us down to Pelican and dropped us off down there. And we went dancing until uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, as one does on the beach and had a really fun night there as well. Boy, were we tired. This week has been so busy with so much stuff going on, but it's all been good stuff, right? It's just, it's been a really busy week. 
And uh, so it was nice to get to go dancing. We, we have kind of all decided that Saturday nights at Pelican on the beach is just really fun. We like Friday nights in Leon. If we're gonna go out, that's the time to go to Leon. We really like 23 Bar. We really like Mihuna's, um, like geckos and uh, geckitos during the week. It's like karaoke and a low-key night. Uh, and then like live bands and stuff other nights. Monday night has a tendency to be via via. We don't go out every night, but we do go out a lot. Um, and, uh, but Saturday nights, Pelican on the beach is kind of our jam. Um, and it's nice to have a place on the beach because because we're part of Leon City Society, but we're also a part of uh, Las Penitas Beach Society and kind of straddling those worlds is important and, and kind of making regular appearances. Um, it's funny, but because we're so involved everywhere in so many different things already, uh, it is important to be places and it's important to us to get to see people. Otherwise we get so isolated from people and it, it's terrible. Um, so it was really nice last weekend I need to kind of, there's a little juxtaposition here. Uh, last Sunday, so six days ago, went to the Super Bowl party uh, at Doug and Kathy's house on in, in Las Penitas, which was really cool. We had a lot of fun there. That was like the, the nearly all expats kind of party event. And then tonight we went to this birthday party, which was very much the Nicaraguan non-expat party event uh, in a kind of similar vein. And it was really interesting to be in, in both of those two completely different places in the two different beaches, Punta Loya being way more uh, Nicaraguan and Las Bonitas being way more expat. Both are very mixed, but there is a, a leaning. Punta Loya is the much older established beach. Las Bonitas is the much newer up and coming beach, uh, which naturally would cause those things as well. Uh, so that was, that was our our evening last night. And then we're like, well, we own a hotel, right? So we're just staying in the hotel, uh, which is really, really handy that we can just be like, ah, we're going to the hotel. Uh, so we stayed there last night, this morning, we got up at the hotel, um, definitely feeling a bit rough because that was a lot of partying because it's like birthday parties here are not like sit around and have some cake, right? They're, they're like rum and, and Coca-Cola and it just flows and chips and dip and more rum and Coke. And, and then going out dancing until the wee hours of the morning. Um, so this morning we're very much like, oh, gotta get a ride back, back to Leon. Um, cause we have a lot going on today. So Paul came and picked us up, uh, in the morning and, and brought us back. Um, and then, uh, I have a lot of, uh, video editing and stuff that I had to do today. So that was a big focus of the day for me. And, uh, Franklin came over because his band, we, uh, uh, went and saw him two nights ago on uh, on Friday because his band is playing uh, my birthday party, which is going to be a mixed expat and Nicaraguan event. So actually that's interesting that in three weeks in a row, there's one that was essentially all expats, one that is essentially no expats, and then one that's half and half. Um, and that one will be here. Uh, and uh, that is going to be, uh, by the time you see this, it will have been last night, right? Because I have a week delay. So I'm recording this with six days to go. Um, but we're putting, I think, we're actually going to put the band up here in the upper ground. You'll probably have seen it like live or bits of it or something by the time I say this. But that is the plan, that they're going to be up there. They're going to play to the house. We have like 60 people have RSVP'd already, uh, which is an awful lot. Um, and it's going to be pretty huge and wild. But so he came over today to scout out and figure out where the band could go and what they needed to do and where they're going to need power and all that kind of stuff so that they're ready uh, for, uh, for Saturday. Uh, which I'm very excited about. Like, I never get birthday parties. Um, I've had one or two. Um, it was a big deal. I remember having one when I was five. Uh, I'd always wanted one, and we did one when I was five, and it was kind of lackluster, and we kind of never did it again. My dad will probably be like, we did lots of birthday parties for you. Um, I do remember when I turned, I want to say 13, um, we had a birthday party. And it was like four guys came over, maybe it was probably like six, and uh, uh, we were going to play video games and just hang out. Because <clears throat> I grew up on a farm in the country, right? So, so having people over was a, was, uh, a, a challenge and a big deal. And uh, I remember that um, because I played a lot of video games and it was like a big thing that I was really good at video games. This is back when, you know, today everyone has video games. So it's not like, oh, you have video games, uh, you're really good at it. They don't have video games, they don't know what to do. Now everybody plays video games all the time. Back then it was like, oh, a lot of people didn't have video games. So I had a lot of video games um, by that point. Uh, I didn't have it during like the Nintendo Entertainment System era. But this is a little bit later with the Commodore Amiga. So this is like the around 1989. That's probably right. And uh, my father decided to surprise everyone with um, a game that is that is. Uh, I'm gonna have to look up the name of the original game. It was by Psygnosis. I remember that. And 
I wish I could. I, it's right on, and they, it's still out there today. It's been like 30 years of, yeah, of, of them updating the game, and, and it's so different today than what it was when I got it in 1989, but it's the same game updated with the same basic gameplay. Uh, but anyway, he got this and was like, haha, we're going to surprise Scott with a new game, and it's going to be equal footing because no one has played it before. And so, um, because it was always this problem that any game we played, I knew the game really well. So I'd have all this experience on the game and, and it made it tough to play against me. And uh, he brought out this new game and I was able to beat everybody. And it was like, oh. <laughs> and it was, it was, I remember that very strongly from that birthday that he thought he was going to get me with a new game that I had no experience on. And I'm like, I can pick up a new game in 10 seconds. We're good to go. Um, so... Not a lot of birthday parties over the years. Uh, very few as an adult. Um, Dominica said, yeah, I think we had one. I was trying to come up with, like, maybe in Texas, maybe in New York. We don't know. So, like, one in 20 years, maybe two. Uh, so it's really cool. This is a big birthday party event for me. Um, I'll be turning 47, for those who are wondering. And uh, uh, I'm really excited. Um, they've, been, they've been putting that together, uh, she and Marcella, and we're like, oh, we're going to surprise him. But then they're like, well, we have so many things he has to be involved with to pull it off that it can't really be a surprise. Then they tried to make the band a surprise. But when I went to invite band members, they're like, oh, ah, that kind of exposes that uh, that those band members are, are going to be here already. Um, and it, I, I kind of thought it was going to happen because I had said, oh, this band is so good back when we first saw him as a band. I'm like, I want to throw a block party. At the, at the estate and invite all the neighbors and have lots of people and have a huge thing and do a big concert here at the house. It would be so much fun with this band. So that's what they were doing for my birthday is having that party uh, for me here. She's being so weird. The dog never just sits like that. I, she, I can kind of see her behind me and I'm like, what is she doing? So, so that is coming. So he came over and ended up hanging out for about four hours uh, and was regaling us with stories of, of all kinds of different things because his father is very famous. Has been, we were watching him on television and stuff. And uh, so he has all these interesting stories of, of growing up in Nicaragua being kind of famous. And, uh, uh, then, um, and then we had uh, more things we had to do in the evening and people coming over to visit. And just all, it was still another really busy day uh, of everything. So this evening, we ordered in uh, pizza for dinner uh, for us and the kids. They're just sick of pizza, which I can't believe I have kids who are sick of pizza. Like, how good of a parent am I that my kids are sick of pizza? But uh, so they wanted food from Sua. So they got like upscale pasta and we just got pizza. And then I spent the evening uh, working on more videos and uh, found out I have access to the third season of The Orville. It's one of my favorite shows ever made. Um, if, for those who don't know, it's kind of like if you took Star Trek, made it more modern, and made it way more serious. Tackling much harder issues, not glossing over things, and not having the weird um, underlying bizarre political messages of Star Trek. If you're just a normal Star Trek fan, you're like, what are you talking about? If you really get into Star Trek, you start getting into like the Prime Directive stuff is really weird. The no money thing is really weird and has big problems that they pretend don't exist, and they do a lot of really terrible colonial things in the universe, which would be fine if they like addressed it. Like, oh, we're evil because we're terrible colonizers. But instead, they're like, we're so good, and nobody ever points out that the Emperor is not wearing any clothes. The Orville is like the same kind of ecosystem as a Star Trek, but where they really actually address the good and evil and the gray areas and the challenges that um, intermingling of new cultures and species and things would actually bring and have brought in the past. It, it's a much more adult, well thought out, well written uh, Star Trek style. Star Trek is much more adventury and glamoury and, and about special effects and the Orville is much more about excellent writing and uh, taking it much more seriously. So I really appreciate it as a show because I love Star Trek as a format, um, but I've always been bothered by how tritely they take everything, how flippant they are, um, and how much that they're trying to push a, a really awkward political agenda under the hood. And the Orville really, really solves that. So I'm really glad to be able to watch. I've watched a couple episodes tonight, uh, and I'm going to binge it probably pretty quickly here uh, as I have a chance to. So that was my day today. Now I'm going to take you on to some videos. I just have some clips to play for you guys. This is kind of an ad hoc collection of stuff that I've had sitting around for a little bit on the hard drives. Just I want to be able to show you some stuff. Sometimes I have extra things. So first up, let's go look at those buses. 
All right, I got lucky. I was out for a walk and there's actually the parking area for the new buses is out here in Veracruz. Now I showed this a while ago. What are these? And uh, I showed this recently with the old buses here. And these are the uh, selection of the new 60 buses that have been delivered from Russia to Nicaragua uh, for here in Leon, up in the mountains of Metagalpa, and down near the capital in Masaya. And everyone's really excited. They've been all over the news that this is a really big infrastructure purchase for the country. 60 new buses is a lot for a, a country of only six and a half million people. And it's only being delivered to three cities if you're in one of these three cities these are a really big deal and these are i mean honestly these are so much nicer and more modern you can see i'm gonna actually let's see can we let's get inside a bus all right here we go this is so much nicer and more modern than we have had in the former buses that we had here uh, and these are, you know, the buses that we had are all very rusted out. We saw one go by the other day. They're like Mercedes Benz and they're like 1950s and 1960s. Very, very old. These are quite new. They're not brand new, but they're quite new and very, very nice. And, uh, it's a lot more luxury, um, new windows. They're not rusted. Like these are in good condition. This is a very exciting, uh, upgrade for, for the cities here and makes the uh, transport a lot more efficient um, and uh, a lot easier and more comfortable around the city. And I'm sure that the bus drivers are very excited as well. So it's neat. I'm glad that we managed to catch that. I'm gonna turn the uh, camera around on me there. I'm really glad that we managed to catch that because that's really interesting. I've been looking for those. I wanted to, to show them and, and uh, kind of participate in the news. Um, <laughs> But uh, I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to ride one, but I may actually take an effort uh, to do so um, sometime soon. I mean, it's super cheap to ride buses around the city. I don't know where they go, but they start from right here. So it's actually a good opportunity to, to give it a try and see what we can do. They're not using that, to the best of my knowledge. None of those are being used as part of the beach run. So we wouldn't use one of those to go out to uh, the beaches, but you could use it uh, to go into downtown uh, and explore Leon, which is a really handy thing to do. Now, I'm really interested to find it out if they're air conditioned. I don't think they are, uh, but they have closing windows and everything. The old ones are just open and rusted out and so bad. Like I'm, I'm hoping that they, you know, just pound them into dust and make them disappear. But um, they're so old that it really, really made people not ride the buses. Like it was, it was bad. This is so nice for all the, the people who don't own cars and have to ride buses around uh, Leon. It's a fantastic upgrade. So. I'm excited about that and excited that we got to show it to you. through this neighborhood. This is the, the cemetery right behind me. And there's this big wall. We talked about this giant wall and these walls that are here. And uh, it's actually open today. I'm just gonna poke my head in real quickly. You can see it's the back side of the school. And it's like this huge open grounds used by the school for stuff. And now you know what's inside the wall. We thought maybe it was a business or something, something interesting. Nope, it's just a big open field. So now you know. Probably could look on a satellite and figure that out. But since we're here, we got to look around. So this is a little bit interesting. I was up here uh, maybe two weeks ago and I did a video for you guys and uh, I came across this old quarry that is listed on Google Maps as a swimming hole and uh, there's people, you know, pictures of people using it and I did a walk around and did some country walking and I came down and there's clearly new stuff going on. There's a big pile of rocks here, but much more importantly, and there can be no 
possible reasonable reason except that my video was taken here these brand new signs are up. This one, uh, private property, uh, and then this one about saving the turtles. Now I'm not sure exactly how they're saving the turtles here in this particular space, because this is the quarry that we were at previously, and it's just, you know, a hole in the ground. So it's pretty weird that that's what is stated here, but they ha and they have things painted down there, right? It's painted like a swimming hole still, um, but there's some fresh tracks down there. So someone has been here and possibly they're still actively quarrying and that's what some of these rocks are or people have been taking rocks and uh, that's why they decided to put up the sign. But it's interesting that that sign went up uh, immediately following uh, us discovering this spot on the show uh, and letting people know where it was. So interesting. I mean, there's nothing to really do up here, right? It's just, it's just a, uh, a rock quarry, but yeah, uh, making an impact, apparently, one episode at a time. Remember to like and subscribe. Get down there in the comments. Tell me about your day. Ask how things are going. If you have any questions about things, interested, comments, let's have a discussion. I love, I love all, everybody talking down there. It's great. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'll put it on the screen. I'll put it in the comments or in the, in the, the write-up and uh, that, that does so much to help the show. That's how we afford to be able to do all of this. Tell your friends about the show, share on social media, Twitter, Reddit, all those things. Just take a second to post it. Go play another episode in the background. I really appreciate that. And uh, I will see all of you tomorrow.